The anti-inflammatory diet, or which foods to eat in order to fight inflammation. I'm sure that you've heard before that you should be trying to have a diet that is rich in anti-inflammatory foods for optimal health and wellness. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about what inflammation is and the foods that you should be eating or avoiding in order to reduce it. What is inflammation? Basically, inflammation is the reaction that your body, more specifically your immune system, has to like any foreign invasion of any kind inside your body and this can range from like a paper cut to a virus and that's actually a good thing because it, it enables your body to defend itself and then also to repair any damage that may have been caused by the foreign invasion but the, the where it gets bad is if it becomes chronic so if it becomes something like inflammation that lasts over long periods of time and that's where it can be linked to many different types of chronic diseases like diabetes or IBS or different types of heart disease or autoimmune disorders all of that and food can play a part in inflammation because things like oxidative stress or altered glucose or like lipid metabolic pathways these things are linked to inflammation and then food can actually impact these things so in this video I'm going to be showing you how the foods that you eat can help prevent inflammation and before we get into specific foods I just want to say that in general what you want to do is eat less of like the standard American diet the sad diet eat less of that and eat more of the Mediterranean diet and the Mediterranean diet consists of eating plenty of fruit and vegetables plenty of whole grains and then things like fish and olive oil and then limiting things like meat or like processed refined foods and this diet has been linked time and time again to lower markers of inflammation and lower instances of many different diseases that i just listed previously do you feel like you're always going on different types of diet plans but nothing seems to work do you feel like you can't control yourself around food and that your food obsession is taking up all of your energy and time do you wish you could build healthy eating habits that actually last without restricting yourself from any of your favorite foods and saying goodbye to dieting forever. I put together a free training that covers the eight steps you need to take in order to figure out healthy eating for good. In this training, you'll learn about which foods you should be having for optimal health, which ones you should be avoiding also, and the quantities in which you should be having them. You'll also learn why you need to incorporate the less healthy foods that you love into your diet and how you can do that. You'll learn how mindful and intuitive eating can massively help your healthy eating habits. You'll learn about the relationship with food you need to have for lasting results and more. So make sure you check out the link for that in the description. You have nothing to lose and everything to win. Now back to the video. Foods you should be eating to reduce inflammation. Fruit and vegetables you should definitely be eating a ton of and they have many beneficial compounds but one of the most beneficial compounds for inflammation or to prevent inflammation is the antioxidants that they contain so we talked about oxidative stress and how it was a marker of inflammation and that oxidative stress is caused by free radicals which you can encounter throughout your your day-to-day -day life and antioxidants are here to actually counteract these free radicals and so reduce this oxidative stress and reduce that inflammation so make sure that you are just eating a bunch of different fruit and veggies at least five portions of fruit and or veggies a day and then just to give you small ideas of where you can find certain antioxidants you can find a vitamin c in citrus fruits and things like strawberries or bell peppers you can find carotenoids such as lycopene or beta carotene in foods like carrots or peaches mangoes things like that lutein in leafy greens and collard greens spinach kale things like that and then anthocyanins and resveratrols which are certain types of polyphenols in berries or grapes 
And speaking of antioxidants, another thing that you really, really need to be eating are herbs and spices. They have the highest antioxidant content per gram. Obviously, you're not gonna be eating 100 grams of herbs and spices, but you do need to be sprinkling them onto your meals as much as you can. They're also very highly anti-inflammatory. The ones that I really recommend trying are turmeric, which is like the golden spice. It has so many health benefits and also black pepper is really good anti-inflammatory and i also suggest pairing them together because that will really boost the absorption of the turmeric if you're able to do that then you have herbs like oregano rosemary and thyme which are rich in polyphenols which is a type of antioxidant then garlic has so many health benefits very beneficial to boost the immune system and highly anti-inflammatory and antibacterial antimicrobial all of that good stuff so you want to be adding a bunch of garlic to your meals and then if we're talking more sweet dishes definitely add some cinnamon or some ginger to your dishes because both of them are highly anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial and if you want to learn more about herbs and spices i made an entire video on that that you can check out right here or in the description another thing that you really want to be doing in order to fight inflammation is to fuel yourself with whole grains and actually contrary to what most people or a lot of people think grains are not pro-inflammatory specifically whole grains they are very anti-inflammatory actually and that's both because they have a direct impact on our inflammation levels and also an indirect one with the fact that the fiber that they contain really helps the gut microbiome which in turn decreases inflammation so you really want to be replacing your refined grains with whole grains as much as possible like if you're eating white pasta white rice white bread get whole wheat pasta brown rice brown bread and then things like quinoa or buckwheat amaranth bulgur all of these things and oatmeal also is a, is a whole grain you also want to make sure that you stock up on legumes because they are a great ally when it comes to anti-inflammation and they have a bunch of phytochemicals which help fight inflammation even if for some reason some people want to associate phytochemicals with inflammation but actually no Things like lectins, for instance, have been shown to reduce markers of inflammation. So make sure that you're getting plenty of things like beans, any type of beans, white beans, black beans, um, like red beans, kidney beans, all of that, and then chickpeas as well, and then lentils, whether, whether it's like red lentils or um, like regular like green lentils. Hummus also counts. You can have hummus and that is a great, a great source of legumes as well. And another really important food to reduce inflammation levels are nuts and seeds. They are so important because they are so easy to just add to your meals, sprinkle on your salads, put in your smoothies, just have like a handful of them as a snack or as a complement to your dessert. And that's because nuts and seeds contain omega-3s, which can help decrease inflammation and prevent like neurodegenerative diseases that are linked to inflammation as well. And other foods that contain omega-3s also include fish. So if you like fish and eat fish, you can definitely have that as well to reduce inflammation levels. Foods to avoid in order to reduce inflammation. So first of all, you really want to avoid any type of food that is highly processed or highly refined. That is a lot of foods that are made from white flour and then come in like packages at the store. A lot of like biscuits, cakes, candies, things like that. And then also junk slash fast food, frozen meals and processed meats are to be avoided. And all of these foods are associated with high blood levels of inflammation markers. And also they contain ages, which are advanced glycation and products which basically just increase inflammation and oxidative stress in the body and if you want i wrote an article on that that you can check out in the description and then another type of food that contain ages that you should be avoiding is any type of fried foods so foods that have been fried in oil for like a, sub a substantial amount of time if it's a little bit it's, it's okay but if it's like deep fried or anything like that you should try to reduce that and then apart from containing high levels of ages these foods also contain trans fats which are highly inflammatory as well and then another one that most people aren't too happy to hear about is alcohol which is associated with like chronic inflammation like very linked to chronic inflammation and the disease that come from that 
basically you have a molecule in your body called LPS which is associated with multiple pathways of inflammation and it's been shown that when alcohol is present that molecule is like very much present in the gut so you don't you don't want you want to avoid that as much as possible because obviously this will trigger inflammation this is not saying that you should never drink alcohol but if you're able to limit your drinking to like one to two drinks a day um usually it says like one for women two for men but also it depends on your body type and how how big you are honestly so and a little bonus tips you have to watch out for your sleep your exercise levels and also your stress levels so obviously if you are exercising more and if you are sleeping better getting higher quality of sleep then that will decrease your inflammation level so that is really important to work on as well and then you also want to do all you can to reduce your stress levels i know that this is very hard to do actually but i think that it's really important that you learn to prioritize rest and understand that this is in the long run very beneficial for your health instead of being in like this go 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 um, mentality where you can never rest like this hustle culture where you have to grind all the time in order to be like as productive as you can that is not good for your stress levels for your sleep and then also for your levels of inflammation which will be heightened if you if you do that and as a french person we have that mentality a little less we are more in like the art of living and enjoying the present moment and just chilling and not like this hustle grind culture all the time and i made a whole video on that if you're more interested and you can check that out right here or in the description that's it for this video thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it don't forget to like it and subscribe and see you on my next one bye